It's around 8 o'clock Saturday morning and vendors are busy setting up for the Asuyas Market on Main. The market runs from early May right through September and it brings together local crafters and farmers to sell their wares. Most vendors set up canopy tents to provide shade in the blistering summer sun. Some, like Asuyas photographer Greg Reilly, have elaborate setups. He relies on his wife Anne Marie to help with setup and sales. We got it down to a fine art. Yeah, we got it down to a system. You know, things come together pretty quickly. It's a two person job though. And it's teamwork. Crafts and produce must be locally made or grown. The majority of vendors sell a variety of crafts and handmade items. But there are farmers selling fresh fruits and vegetables they've grown. Wayne Pendergraft of Pendergraft Farms on the Asuyas East Bench has been a regular at Market on Main for the past 14 years. He or his daughters bring fruits and vegetables to sell. So what, what kind of things do you, do you bring to the market? Uh, I guess you start with... Um, start with cherries, then go to apricots, peaches, plums, uh -huh. nectarines. Okay, and um, do you sell quite a bit? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Gurinder no, Singh Buttar farms fruit at Road 5 south of Oliver. This market in August was his very first. This is my first time doing this. Uh, today is my first day. Oh, and how's it going so far? So far it's going really good. I'm really happy to be here and uh, people are really nice, so helpful. The atmosphere is really good. Music going on. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. I loved it here. It's, I didn't accept this much happiness here. It's so, so much. It's such a great place to be here. I'm glad to be here. Roy Bainbridge operates five sets of hands and sells diverse homemade products ranging from walking sticks to dog treats to arthritis cream. The name came because there was about five people involved in this business at the beginning, all relatives and friends. And they still help a little bit, but I'm mostly doing it now. I'm fully retired, so these are all things that I make myself. And so what do, what do you sell then? I sell dog treats and paw cell for dogs. I sell a moisturizing cream, an arthritis cream, room sprays, and I make walking sticks from wood on our property. That's quite a diverse, uh, quite a diverse business. Yeah, these are all things that mean something to me. The dog treats because we've got a dog, arthritis cream because I've got arthritis myself, moisturizing cream because I've got some dry skin and I've been making moisturizing cream for a long time. The room sprays we use in our house, we have a lot of guests come by, so we use the room spray when we clean up the house for the next guests that are coming by. And then the walking sticks is I'm fire smarting my property. I wanted to do something practical with the wood. It's 9 o'clock and most vendors are ready to receive customers as they make a few final adjustments to their displays. The market runs right through to 1 o'clock but the busiest hours are usually between 10 a.m. and noon. Especially in the summer, visitors come from throughout the Okanagan Valley, the Lower Mainland, Alberta, and even farther afield, some from Europe. Janice St. Louis is the president of the market's board of directors. She also sells t-shirts she designs under the name Oh the Memories, Souvenirs of Asuyas. Well, we're a bona fide farmer's market, meaning we're a member of the BC Association of Farmer's Markets. And to do that, we have to follow certain rules. Like everyone who's here has to either make, bake, or grow the product that they're selling. So if somebody is selling uh, pickles, they made them themselves. We've been in operation since 2006, and um, we've expanded it. But we're doing a, an evening market in the summer uh, down at Gyro Park, and we're already planning our Christmas uh, markets uh, in October and November. Well, we're run by a volunteer board of directors, and it used to be probably a split of non-vendors and, and vendors, just community volunteers. I used to do it just as a community volunteer, but I'm a vendor now. But we're all, all, everyone on the board of directors is a vendor, and we each have assignments, whether somebody looks after social media or someone does the bookkeeping or, 
or someone uh, organizes the vendors, that sort of thing. We have one paid position, um, and that's the person who, the market manager, who comes around and collects the money from all the vendors, makes sure that the site is safe. What can I say? It's, it's a fun place to be. We have music. Usually it's live music every Saturday. And I um, want to just come down and have a look around and have a coffee and enjoy and visit some of your neighbors. We have people that meet here regularly on Saturdays uh, that are local people that just know, oh, I know she's going to be here at 10, so I'll come down and have a visit. Marcel St. Louis is market manager and is the only paid member of the otherwise all-volunteer market organization. Well, as market manager, I come a little bit earlier and I uh, make sure that the site is nice and clean and ready for uh, the vendors to come. And I just uh, make sure that they're all lined up uh, spaced out correctly between each other and uh, after um, after everybody settled in and quiet down and sales start I go around and collect the uh, the fees for um, for the people that are uh, daily or uh, with their punch cards. Most of the people that come here just enjoy the market and, and they're happy they're looking around and uh, gives them something to do on a Saturday, Saturday morning and uh, yeah by noon one o'clock things quiet down because they want to hit the beach. Many markets feature live local musicians. Roland Berg was singing and strumming 1970s and 80s popular songs. A regular singer is Sue Wolf who sings vintage songs mostly from the 1930s to 1950s. She's also the vendor's coordinator. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. I'm a vintage, what I call a vintage singer. So I sing anything from 30s, 40s, 50s. I do a lot of wartime stuff. Um, and I take that into residential homes as well because music's really important for dementia sufferers. So I take a tour there, but I sing here. I'm doing music in the park this year as well, which is very exciting. If I'm not vending, then I'm singing. If I'm not singing or vending, I'm worrying about all the other vendors. <laughs> what attracted you to that era of uh, music? I don't, I think it's something I grew up with. Being English, um, we're flooded with that music from a very young age, obviously, uh, you know, with, with singers like Vera Lynn, people like that. It's, it's a big part of our English heritage and I've always sung and it's the music that really interested me. It's, to me is real music, it tells a story, there's a lot of um, emotion behind it and I just don't think that makes songs like they used to. So, <laughs> Jonna Booth loves to crochet animal stuffies based on cartoon characters. This year was her first at the market as handmade stuffies and things. Making a springtime bee. She started making them five years ago and has made more than 200. I create lifelike um, animals. Uh, sometimes they're, char they're characters of um, Looney Tunes, Pokemon, and I've been doing it for the last five years and I made over 200. This guy here, this blue guy, he's my favorite. He's over five feet long. Um, he took between 120 and 150 hours to make. Some of them only take an hour or two, and some of them take more than that, but he's the longest so far. The following week, the Blue Dragon sold. This is my first year, but it's a wonderful experience. I'll definitely do it again. Zane Gates sells handmade vegan soap for Penticton-based Soda Creek Soap. His booth is almost always busy. What's your most popular soap? This Okanagan cherry, very popular. The aloe sea moss, um, of course lavender, but uh, one of our favorite blends is the lavender lemongrass there. Yeah, I try to make it here every week, all summer. We've been doing this at this market in Sioux for a few years. It's been a really good market for us. A lot of people come back. Um, uh, like the first market of the season, people will come back that were here last season and they come and stock up and uh, it's a really nice atmosphere here. It's uh, actually one of my favorite markets. To, I've been to a lot of them in the valley and this is one of my favorites. Not all vendors come to sell something. 
Myers Bennett is there to raise awareness of the Trail of the Okanagans Society. Their goal is to develop a continuous recreational trail from Sycamus, BC to Brewster, Washington. They aim to develop hiking and cycling tourism while also raising awareness of First Nations traditions and culture. How, how has the market worked out for you? Well, it's been great because I've, I've talked to a lot of people, uh, a lot of people taking the maps, they've taken our cards, uh, gone to our website, so it's more just an awareness that this is happening and the more we do this, the more promotion it is, so it's, and it's a lot of people from out of town that don't realize that we have this trail here. At last it's closing time, one o'clock. The vendors disassemble their booths even faster than they put them up. The following Saturday, they'll be back at it again, providing tourists and locals with a pleasant way to spend a Saturday morning, and hopefully allowing vendors to make some money for all their hard work. For the South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce, this is Richard McGuire.